Hey guys, it's Sam. I'm the technical product specialist here at Zsphere, the cloud solutions provider for MSPs. So today we're going to be looking at the first in the series for the Ninja RMM videos. So this video is going to cover the configuration of your Ninja RMM. So guys, think about it this way. You just set up your Ninja RMM and you don't know where to start. So this is what this video is going to help you with. So we're going to look at a few different areas, including setting up your Ninja RMM, how to add your organizations or your customers, adding user accounts and your devices, and branding and Sistray icon. So you can see here, guys, this is the dashboard page. So this is the first view that you get when you come and log on to your Ninja console. So you can see here, we've got some quick links on the left-hand side. You can create an organization, add your devices, create or edit a policy, add cloud monitor, create a user, set up PSA and configure remote access. Now we're gonna look at the PSA integration and configure remote access in a later video. So today it's just the basics on the raw setup of your Ninja RMM. So first of all, we're gonna have a quick look at the general settings within the configuration. So you can see here, we've got a time zone. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my time zone. As you can see, there's quite a lot of choice on here, guys. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select my locale. So that will edit things like the notifications and your time settings. So now I'm gonna go ahead and create an organization. So I'm going to call this test org. You can add a description in here. So you can call this anything you want. Um, you can give it a name and then you can also add a description for your organization. On the alerting, you can see that we've got several options here, but I'm going to leave it on 24 seven. So this means my alerting is going to come through 24 hours, seven days a week for this organization. That's exactly what I want. Now you can configure that a little bit more within the user settings, but I'll show you how to do that in a few moments. So in the policy tab, we can see here, we've got two different tabs. We've got agent policies, which cover Windows Workstation, Windows Server, and Mac. And then we've got NMS policies, which covers a lot of different things, including routers, scanners, switches, and printers. So that's all of your network monitoring devices. So that's the things that you might want to monitor on top of your um, endpoints. So you can see on the agent devices um, for the policies and the NMS policies, they're all set to a default policy in here. Now, I'm going to show you in a few moments how to look at the policies, how to even create policies, inherit them. Um, you can basically inherit a full policy and then create overrides per device or organization. So the policies are really, really granular within Ninja RMM. So it's exactly what you guys need as MSPs to kind of monitor exactly what you want to monitor, when you want to monitor it. It's pretty awesome. So we can see here, we've got a splash top um, tab in this uh, organization settings. Now we're going to look at that in a later video where we're going to cover team viewer versus splash top. So we'll come back to it. So we've added our organization and now I'm going to show you the policy settings. Um, so we're going to go ahead, click in configuration, then policies, then agent policies. And the one I'm going to look at is the Windows Workstation policy. So you can see here, guys, we've got some different tabs on the left hand side here. Now, conditions is the first one that you actually get to. Now, you can see that this already comes built in with some default tabs. Um, so we've got things like print to services down, CPU usage is high, uh, high memory usage. So these are kind of default functions. Um, now you can change these. You can also delete these as well. But I kind of recommend that you leave these in here. You can at least just turn them off if you don't want to use them. Now, if you look over here, we can see that we've got use template and we've got add a condition. Now, if we click on use template, this is a really, really awesome overlooked feature within Ninja RMM. And I think a lot of MSPs never really kind of focus too much on this because they kind of just skip it and go to add a condition. Now, you can add conditions, which are great, but the templates sometimes are already set up for the things that you want to monitor, and they're literally here with a click of a button. So if you want to monitor Active Directory servers, we can click that, 
And if I open it up, you can see that if any of these Windows services go down to do with the Active Directory, it will notify us. You can reset it, so you can choose your time frame. So as small as 90 seconds, we'll leave it set to the default of four hours here. Um, you can reset the condition when it's no longer met. I can send notifications to my user account, which will come to that after the policies. I can notify on reset. I can set a severity and a priority level for this alert. So if it's something really serious, I can set these to critical and high. And then if I want to, after any template or condition, I can also add an action as well. So it's pretty awesome. Let's have a look at the actions um, for the conditions that we can have a look at. So um, for example, I'm an MSP. I've set up some devices and now I'm looking in policy and I want all of my machines to have Adobe Air on them. So I can just go in here, click add, save, and then I can just select an action and install application. So direct from here, I can select the architecture. If I've got the upload file in, I can put that in here. I can put in the application name or I can even put the URL to the executable. Um, so it's pretty awesome. You've got command line parameters that you can put in. You can run as a system or as a current user. So pretty much any piece of software that you want to install on any of your devices, you can do that just by setting up a condition. Now remember guys, these policies can be set up organization wide or you can have them for every organization. So every single device that gets input on a, an organization, if you want it to be set up so that TeamView is installed, you can do that. If you want it to be set up so that Microsoft Office is installed, you can also do that. It's pretty cool. So in scheduled actions, again, we can set a scheduled action to be performed at a specific time and date whenever we choose. So if I wanted to delete temporary files every day at five o'clock, so I'm just going to go ahead and call this task. Um, if I also want to then clear the DNS cache as well as deleting temporary files, and also empty the recycle bin, I can go ahead and do that. So every day at five o'clock, delete temporary files, clear the DNS cache and empty the recycle bin will actually occur. That's really awesome. So that saves me from having to log in, do the actual actions, or even worse, go to the physical location of my customers. So this is here to make your lives a lot easier and also to help things run a little smoother for your customers too. It's pretty cool. So you can see here, we've got some other options as well. So the Windows patches, um, we're actually going to look at this in a lot more detail in a separate video, along with the software or third party patching. Um, we're also going to look at antivirus in a separate video as well. So you can see those in the future guys, and um, you'll be able to check those out in a lot more detail. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to the activity section on the policies. So this is a really neat feature that Ninja RMM introduced. I think it's pretty awesome. So with your other integrations, you can also be sent notifications through the activities to your Ninja account. So for example, if you give one of your users, so you've got a customer who's a relatively small business, but they've got a techie guy. You can give that techie guy a user account on Ninja. You can set his privilege level so he can only see his own organization. But if a web root threat is detected, he can be notified direct from here. So this can be sent to his Ninja user. So he'll know that a threat has been detected. Um, you can have a look through the activities, guys, but there's a lot of different things on here. Even things like if a partition is added or removed or a port's opened or closed, or even such things as a user account is logged in or logged out. It's pretty cool. So do have a play around with that. So I'm going to show you now how to add a device. So we can do this in one of two ways. We can go out to the dashboard and the getting started page and click add devices, or we can also click the little cross at the top up here and click add devices. So we've got the option here. You can see three different options. So we've got Windows, we've got Mac, and we've got NMS. Now, this basically installs an agent on a different machine. So we can see here that we've got network monitoring. So you need the agent for that, which is a slightly different agent and variant to the Windows, which is also a different variant to the Mac, obviously. So if we click Windows and we choose our test organization, 
I'm going to go ahead and build this installer. So what Ninja is doing right now is setting up this MSI file. Um, so as you can see, I can download the installer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, that's got a little bit of time left on it. So I can do this for each device. But Ninja also gives you the option to do mass deployment of the Ninja installer. So if you've got a lot of different devices, you can do mass deployment of this one MSI file. So there's a full walkthrough guide on how to do that, which is pretty awesome. It's in the community within Ninja, within the document section. And I think you guys will find the document section really, really useful for all of the things that you need to know about Ninja RMM and how to do them. So what I'm going to do now, um, so I'm looking at setting up my device. I'm going to add a user account. So I'm going to go in here um, and add in a user account for me. So I'm going to fill out my details. So I'm going to put in a name in here. I'm going to fill out my email. I can add a password in here. So this password, guys, is for your Ninja logon. So for me to log into Ninja now, it would be slison at zsphere.com as the username. And then whichever password I set within here would be on the Ninja logon. So I can add in a phone number. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I can also turn on uh, multi-factor authentication, which is really cool as well. Um, I can show or hide the getting started page and then I've got user permissions. So this is a really, really important feature. Um, so for myself, I obviously want system administrator privileges for all of the organizations. So any organization that I add in here, I can see them. I can access all of the devices and I can change things like the policies and any kind of settings on there. If, for example, you as an MSP want to give uh, one of your customers techie guys an account on here, you go ahead and click custom. You can then choose your selected organization. So if I wanted one guy to have access to my test organization, I just select that organization. I can then give them different levels of privilege. So I can give them different access to different items like the PSA or the activities or command line. I can then set the different privilege levels within here. So policy, reports, organization, device. I can give them access to TeamViewer or Splashdot or Cloudberry. And then for the notifications, if I wanted to give that one person notifications for that one organization, I just go ahead and select it. If you leave the severity and priority level set to all, they'll receive all notifications of all levels, which is kind of recommended. In the settings, we can see that we've got preferences turned on for email, and we've also got the schedule of when these alerts come through. So if you don't want to be receiving emails at two o'clock in the morning, you can set these um, to be custom or weekdays nine till five. If you don't mind receiving emails and you want to be notified whenever anything happens, you can just leave that 24 seven. So we can see here, guys, here's my organization. That's pretty awesome. It's already set up in there. So I'm going to show you one more neat feature. So in the branding tab, we've got the website branding here. So if I click edit, I can enable website branding. I can put in a phone number, an email address. I can brand my site. So I can call that whatever I want to. I can turn on the help request function. So I can put in topics and actions and URLs here. And then if we go on to images and themes, we've got the login logo, the application logo and the browser icon. So I can change the Ninja console to make it have the Zsphere logos. And then I can also do this really neat little feature of changing the color scheme. Um, so I can go ahead and change the colors to make it match my logos. It's pretty cool. So underneath on the website branding, we have SysTrait icon. So if I click configure, I can enable this in here. I can turn the icon into any icon that I want to. So for me, that would be the Zsphere logo. I can add in a tooltip here so you can put in things like your phone numbers, your support email addresses, anything you want. And then I can add menu items. Now, I'm going to show you one in particular because I think this is really, really useful to an MSP. I find this feature really awesome, to be honest, guys. It goes into a lot of depth um, and I think it can be really, really helpful for you and your customers. So on the help request form, 
We can add an icon to the sys tray icon. So once it pops up on the sys tray, you can see a little icon there. We can forward to a support email address or a PSA integration. So I'm going to leave this to a support email address. So I'd go ahead and put in my email in here. So if anybody sends this help request form, it'll come direct to me. Now, the really awesome thing about this feature is that all of this information will be drawn from your customer and sent to me through my support email address. So I'll receive all of this info and you can add as many of these different functions and features as you want to within the sys tray. So I can also add other things in here, like I can launch applications or commands. I can put in emails here. So we can actually put in an email body um, and a subject. I can put an about topic in here so I can say, um, what the help's about or what my company's about. It's really cool. And then you can even link things like URLs. So you can direct back to your official website as well. So I just wanted to show you that feature, guys, because I think it's, it's really cool. So, guys, that sums up the video for the configuration for Ninja RMM. So as the first video in this series, I'm really keen to hear from you any questions that you might have or any kind of feedback that you might want to give as well. So feel free to get in touch. So this is my details on the screen right now. So that's my job title. You've got my email and you've got my phone number. So feel free to get in touch with us about any other products that we distribute or anything that you've seen on the video. Also, this is really, really good for you guys. So as an MSP, register with us as a Zsphere MSP partner within our program. So Ninja customers get an additional 10% discount on top of the MSP existing discount prices. So that's an extra little bonus for you there, guys. We've got extended trials. You get the Z Magazine, which is specifically aimed at MSPs. It's got some really awesome features and blogs in there from some of our other customers. It's got tips in there as well on sales and marketing. We've got VIP events, and then we've also got free product licenses as well. It takes 20 seconds to sign up. So take a look at that at zsphere.com. You won't be disappointed. So thanks for watching today's video, guys. Um, I hope that you're looking forward for the rest videos in the series. Um, I'll see you soon.